Hello. This video is for Derek. <coughs> I was going to show him the story. Anybody who's interested in the way these uh, these tractors work, but uh, I uh, we have a 6170 loader tractor, which is about a uh, well engine horsepower is 170 and PTO is 150 and uh, these have uh, John Deere has an IVT transmission and we we got this first and I was just going to kind of compare and contrast that with the uh, the Agco Caterpillar type transmission the way this works is you have a uh, left hand front forward and reverse and it keeps it in the same gear kind of like an automatic car you hit the pre hit the gas and you can go at uh, whatever speed you want and so when I'm coming up to load I let off the uh, foot pedal and I slow down and the nice thing about the John Deere is if I put it into neutral from the first from forward or reverse there's an automatic braking as you do that which is is really good for loader work so f as far as the loader tractor this is this is really good and see the John Deere has the two ranges which is um, slower and then faster right there and uh, and what I can do is I'll pull this lever back, put it slower, and then see I can only go as fast as the lever wants me to go with my foot pedal. So I'm basically setting my max speed on this, it's like one half mile an hour or whatever. Move that lever forward, the dots go up, I can go three miles an hour top speed. Which is, I think, when we have it in this for loading, loading hay and stacking hay, I usually go a little bit faster than that, but not a lot. Probably about four, four miles an hour. And see, I can increase my RPMs. Now I'm only ever going to go four miles an hour, so that's pretty nice. Don't ever have to touch the clutch creep up to whatever you're trying to load pile or if you got to put it in this mixer here and reverse hit the gas to go a little faster so that's, that's kind of how the John Deere works um, of course you're supposed to keep a minimum with this deal 1200 RPMs for the uh, exhaust system. The exhaust on this deal has got like a, well, you know, the whole world has gone to some kind of lower emissions, which, yeah, you end up spending a lot more time and energy and fuel because you have to require, it's not emitting anything bad into the environment like carbon dioxide so uh, anyway I can get off on my soapbox here but uh, but this particular tractor doesn't have death it was just right before they did the death and so what it has is uh, a I don't know, kind of a filter type catalytic converter thing and if you run at too low of RPMs that that filter clogs up a lot faster so you have to keep it at 1200 and so what happens is they call it a burn off so when uh, when you're when it gets built up too much it will actually just sit here and do its burn off routine and uh, to clean that filter out and that takes up oh probably quarter of a tank of fuel to do that <laughs> and so you got to keep your rpms up to 1200 to, to run around and it, at least it'll it will uh 
keep that filter from clogging up too fast. So I'll come over to the uh, the cat, and this is a lot higher horsepower tractor here. Uh, it's I can't remember exactly. It's the 685D. I don't know. It's around 300 horse. Really nice tractor for what we do, but it runs off the depth. We've got the depth system and the fuel here. So I don't have to worry about that RPM issue in this one. But its transmission is uh, works quite a little bit different. It's still got the uh, forward and reverse right here. You see, I have it in a manual shift right now, so which means that this lever right here controls the the shift. So instead of pushing it into two different ranges and then running your foot pedal or your RPMs to set your speed, this deal, all I do is bump this forward or backwards and it shifts it into a higher or lower gear. Now I can either bump it forward or hold it forward. The longer I hold it forward, the more gears it will shift through, which is kind of neat. So you can switch it into the foot pedal mode where it will run at the lowest RPMs that it needs for the power requirement. And that's really nice except for when you have the PTO on. And um, that PTO requires a lot of power the whole time, so you have to have that. So I'm running about 1800 right now to turn the screws in this mixer. So anyway. It's, uh, it takes it was a little bit getting used to on this this tractor because but I really like how it works um, the only thing about this tractor well there's a few things like the John Deere everything is set up to where all the controls everything that you want to do with the John Deere is intuitive basically you kind of just look at the screen or you look at your controls and oh this is what this does it's, it's not hard to figure out it's user friendly now with the, the Agco or the Caterpillar version of a tractor you still have all of that stuff but it's not near so intuitive of what you actually have to do so so like here's a here's the PTO on and off so the other day we went to switch the PTO on hadn't run it you know well about a month ago and run the PTO yet and I was like well I turned it on and it isn't going well you figure it out and the, there's a little button underneath this panel that you have to push to get the PTO to work so it's um it's just things like that that and then you have to just kind of go through and try to you have to figure it out and you have to go to the book and you have to look it all up whereas the John Deere it's it, it, like I said it's it's really intuitive and then, uh, the other thing about this tractor that I don't like is there isn't a flat surface anywhere all this stuff is sloped down to fall off so instead of putting it flat so I could you know put a hat there or coat or kit or whatever you know just sit up here or you know maybe my cell phone the thing will just fall off so there's there's nothing you can you, you can just set anywhere so maybe that's by design they said well we don't want anything extra in these cabs but shoot they give you plenty of room so but uh, but no I, we like it uh, the trade-off for the inconveniences is is fine you know I mean similar horsepower tractor than a John Deere same year this is a this is a 2012 so it's a fairly new tractor um, but same year same horsepower for a John Deere would have ran us 60 to 80 thousand more for this to do the same job and so uh, when you're talking you know this thing costs 116 we got it for um, you know another 60,000 is I mean that's that's a significant jump and uh, so I don't know hopefully it holds up over the years but uh, you know they say these cat these cat engines are just they'll just keep going and going and going you don't want to have to worry about them it's just everything else falling down around it but but 
I don't know, Agco's got a lot of products out there. There's Agco has Cat now and Massey. I'm sure all the Massey's kind of the same type of deal. Oh, and it, the other thing is, it's, it's just little stuff. The radio doesn't work at all, you know. And I don't know how to change this. It says I'm, I want it to be 17E in here. What, whatever E is, you know. It's just, it's just weird stuff, you know. But, uh, but like I say, we can. It's a lot. It's a big step up from our case that we're trying to do the same job with our, our old uh, 7120 case, and uh, yeah, the extra horsepower. And, and the way this sh thing shifts, so like I said before, is like I really like like it when we're feeding. But uh, but yeah, that's about it. Um, beautiful day, January day, probably about 40 degrees outside right now in eastern Montana at the 28th of January. Uh, got water melting hell over to the place. Yeah, it's crazy. Usually, you know, if it gets above freezing this time of year, it's a really nice day, and we've had so much nice weather this winter. It's it's just been really nice. But uh, yeah, that's all I have for now. Um, we'll talk to you guys later.